You ever had one of those times where everybody in the world says, yeah, no kidding. This is, uh, this is one of those times. So from, uh, <laughs> from NBC News, let's, uh, let's read this and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll discuss it as we read it. U.S. officials misled public on Afghan war, according to Washington Post. Yeah, yeah. I don't know of many wars where the public wasn't misled. Uh, if you delve into every war, there's aspects of every war in which the public was absolutely misled. Let's get into this. A trove of government documents show that U.S. officials systematically misled the public about the war in Afghanistan during three presidential administrations, the Washington Post reported in an explosive story Monday. Yeah, yeah. I, at, at this point, I would say, yeah, and... <laughs> What did we expect for them to tell us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I, I severely doubt it. The Post said the documents showed that senior U.S. officials hid evidence and distorted statistics to make it appear that the U.S. was winning the war in Afghanistan and claims they show that there was no consensus on the war's objectives or how it would end. Yes. The Afghan war had no clear objective. There was no point at which we could say the war was won. It was an open-ended. It was like a blank check. There was no end to it. We had no uh, basis, no, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, we had no template to say once we reach this part, once we have accomplished all these things, we have won the war. When we, objectives. Two. Once we have completed certain objectives, then we can declare the war won. Well, there really weren't any objectives. So, I mean, there were objectives, but there were no clear end objectives. We were devoid of a fundamental understanding of Afghanistan. We didn't know what we were doing. Douglas Lute, a three-star army general who served as a war czar for Afghanistan under the George W. Bush and Barack Obama administration, said in a 2015 interview, according to the Post. Loot was not available for comments. The paper obtained the 2,000 pages. The, the paper obtained the 2,000 pages of documents, including what it says are notes from more than 400 interviews with military commanders, diplomats, and aid workers, as well as Afghan officials that were part of a lessons learned project after a three-year legal battle. The Post also said it obtained hundreds of memos by former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. Uh, lots of documents to go through. I'd hate to be the one to go through that that amount of pages. It's just, at, at this point, is, is anybody actually surprised? We weren't told the, the truth about a war. I mean, I think I kind of expect it, and I'm pretty sure you guys... Don't expect that you're being told the whole truth either. Uh, it's just kind of apropos. <laughs> it's uh, the motif, the 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 motif operandi, the standard operating procedures for politicians and government officials alike. The Post published the documents two days after U.S. Taliban talks restarted and compared them to the Pentagon Papers, a top-secret government study that was packed with damaging re revelations about America's conduct in the Vietnam War leaked to the New York Times and the Post in 1971. The war in Afghanistan is America's longest and has raged on for 18 years. Can you believe it? It's been 18 years. Wow, time flies. Wow. It has been a long time. America has had boots on the ground there since 2001 when U.S. forces toppled the Taliban regime for harboring Osama bin Laden, the architect behind the September 11th, 2001 terror attacks. Since then, just under 2,300 American troops have died in the war, torn country, between January 2009 when the United Nations began a systematic documentation of civilian casualties, at September, and in September this year, some 34,000 Afghan civilians died as a result of the armed conflict. Uh, yes. Uh, quite a few of those are from being used as human shields, packing civilians into places uh, that the Taliban knew that the United States government uh, wanted to destroy. So a lot of that 34,000 is actually on uh, 
Well, it's on both sides, really. It takes two sides to have a war. I mean, seriously. Uh, the head of the federal agency that conducted the interviews, John Sopko, declined to comment to NBC News and advanced the report's publication. But Sopko told the Post that the documents show the American people have constantly been lied to. Yes, and we're being lied to now. It's, it's, it's just, we expect it of our politicians today. We expect it of politicians throughout history, and I expect it from future politicians as well. That's kind of one of the reasons that politicians can get away with what they do because it's kind of expected and when they do what they do that's uh, ludicrous and absurd that we get other people fired from their jobs people look at it like yeah yeah i know and then it's forgotten and two weeks later there's a new news cycle that covers everything else up and it's forgotten and whew, dust in the wind it is all just dust in the wind anyways in one of the reported interviews, Army Colonel Bob Crowley, who served as a senior counterinsurgency advisor to U.S. military commanders in 2013 and 14, told government interviewers in 2016 that every data point was altered to present the best picture possible. Yes. Yes. And why do they do that? Well, when the war becomes unpopular with the populace, well, then you can't continue the war. So they make it look good. And they make it look promising and they say, hey, we're completing these objectives and this and that and this and that. When in reality, they didn't really have any clear defined end objectives. They just, uh, they just weren't there. Uh, I'm going to skip down here to here to where was it? Uh, right there. I have no visibility into what the bad guys are. Rumsfeld Secretary of Defense under Bush complained in a September 8, 2003 memo, according to the Post. Through a spokesman... Rumsfeld declined to comment. At the same time, in public, those in charge of the war continued to emphasize that they were making progress, the paper reported. Well, it's hard to measure progress in a war like that. It is not an asymmetrical war. It is not, uh, it, it is not a normal war. It is not armies that are in uniform that have equipment versus another army in uniform that has equipment, and your enemies are clearly defined. And you can have clear objectives of taking this military base, uh, doing this, doing that. Once we have done this and that and this and that, then the war is considered one. Well, you're effectively fighting the populace in a war like this. How do you declare any kind of a win or any kind of a victory? Destroy the whole populace? That, that, that doesn't work? I mean, it's almost impossible to have a clear objective in this because who is your enemy? They are not wearing uniform. It could be any person. Government officials would spin casualty counts and other figures to make it appear that troops and resources were having the desired effect. An unnamed senior National Security Council official is quoted as saying in the documents, yeah, yeah. They've always done that. They've always tried to play down the bad and play up the good. It's just politics at this point. It's just all it is. Attacks are getting worse. That's because there are more targets for them to fire at. So more attackers are a false indicator of instability, he reported. Said uh, He reportedly said, mimicking how the government would spin. I know. There is no winning it. Are you surprised that we were lied to? I honestly, sadly at this point, can't say that I am. I expect it. Were we lied to? Yeah. Anytime... Anything with the government comes up, you've got to kind of be like, okay, well, take it with a grain of salt, do your own research, investigate it, and come up with your own opinion, really. I just, I'm surprised, quite honestly, that them lie, the government lying is actually news. I expect it. Don't you? Let me know in the comments if you believe that Uncle Sam, that... Our government is altruistic and never lies to us and always has our best interests in heart. Because honestly, sometimes I believe that the government has the government's best interest at heart. And in this partisan world we live in now, it's so hard to disseminate information and get people to actually listen to you and hear you that, I don't know, it's an uphill battle. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> I expect it. I love you guys. I'll see you guys on the next one. And uh, let me know what you guys think. I want to know what your opinion is.